From some time in the late 15th century to about the mid 18th century, persecution of witches across Europe was part of the culture. It was, it was worse in some countries than others. But, you know, it was common across the entire continent, pretty much. It wasn't until 1735, here in the United Kingdom, that witchcraft ceased to be an act punishable by law. 1735. There are still witch hunts going on today, and I don't mean witch hunt as in a metaphor for moral panic in general here. I mean real witch hunts are going on in India, Papua New Guinea and parts of Africa. You might be surprised to know that witchcraft is a criminal offence in Saudi Arabia. Or perhaps you wouldn't be surprised to know that, I don't know. Yeah, people have actually been beheaded for witchcraft in the Arab Kingdom. I was watching a video on Al Jazeera a couple of weeks ago called A Curse in the Family. Early in the video you see a mob of mostly women in a village in West Bengal getting angry and surrounding the house of a woman they think is a witch. They actually think she's responsible for the death of a nine-year-old girl. Some of the villagers are wanting to chop the witch up with an axe. You know, it's genuinely disturbing how deeply entrenched superstition is in some communities. Yeah, go watch the video. In several African countries, witches are thought to be responsible for things like poverty, famine, different kinds of misfortune like infertility or crop failure, and so-called witches are blamed for natural disasters too. It's clearly women and children who are suffering the most from superstitious practices such as persecution of witches. Often elderly women will be attacked, beat up, and sometimes killed. Hundreds of old women are killed every year in Tanzania for being witches, or suspected witches, should I say. Thing is, a lot of people self-identify as witches in parts of the world where this persecution is going on, and, you know, this self-identification really isn't helping things, is it? Okay, a lot of the time, economic factors come into it, you know. Wealthy members of communities can be targeted and accused by those who want to get rid of them and want to get their hands on the victim's land or property. I don't think you can simply point to one thing and say, this is what causes a belief in witches and sorcery and the like, you know. Poverty plays its role, as does ignorance, and we can't ignore religious indoctrination either. And there are a few other things too, you know, maybe more subtle things. Belief in magic and divination, as educated people will be aware, is not exclusive to a few cultures dotted around here, here and there. Belief in magic, magical influence, is a cultural universal. A YouTuber called Steve Mills uploaded a video called The Religious in Africa Burning Suspected Witches. Now, this is an age-restricted video, and if you're not comfortable seeing scenes of extreme violence, I'd advise that you avoid watching it. But yeah, having watched it personally, I'm not surprised that stuff like this is still going on where poverty, ignorance and fear are rife. I believe this particular incident took place in Kenya 
a few years ago. You know, evangelical Christianity, evangelical Christian preachers have to bear some of the responsibility for the persecution of women and children and sometimes men in Africa, in parts of Africa, yeah. Other videos you might want to check out. Child Witch Victims of Nigeria, Africa by My Only Ten. Yeah, you might want to check that one out. And also Killing the Witches, Papua New Guinea by Journeyman Pictures. Yeah. Do you think there will ever come a time when persecution of so-called witches will cease? Or do you think superstition, belief in sorcery, witches and evil curses will always exist on some scale, in some way? I'd like to hear your thoughts. Anyway, see you later folks. Take it easy.